My name is Paul Kelton. I am a freelance writer and game developer. Gaming is, is relevant to documentaries because games are about making systems visible um, and giving systems fictions. And a lot of documentary uh, is about kind of digging in um, or digging down into, into how systems work and how systems connect with each other. Um, so for some types of models of documentary, probably less the, the kind of the autobiographical one or the biographical model, uh, but ones where you're actually looking at how different aspects of things interact with each other. If you can create systems that encode that information, you can let people play with those systems and tweak some of the variables and see what actually happens. The craft has probably expanded. I think the more options that people have to create experiences or, or to communicate parts of reality, which is effectively what documentaries are, um, right? like have been opened up by things like the iPad or new platforms or by things like the web um, or things like games. It's, it's another tool, I think, that people suddenly have um, in the same way that the digital video probably changed how people create documentaries because suddenly people could just shoot for hours upon hours upon hours and then craft the story um, in editing, which probably was something that people would be far more reluctant to do. Um, with film. So I think it's just another tool that lets documentary filmmakers gather information and present information in ways that um, they just didn't have before. I mean, the, the recent um, the census website that they created where they had all the, you could type in your, um, your postcode and it would give you all of this information about Australia and about the people who were nearby and about their jobs and about how old they were on average. And in a kind of an interactive way, I think it was something that would never happen. Um, it just wasn't possible because of the technology. But you could argue that that's a form of documentary because it's presenting that information in a way that is interactive and in a way that sort of brings it home. So I think it's not necessarily that the form has changed. I think people just have more tools now to tell stories and to communicate ideas and to communicate reality. For, for anyone who wants to tell stories or anyone who wants to connect with an audience, it's always it's always an exciting time because the technology just affords these new possibilities. It's just about, again, it always comes back to the experience. Like, what do you want your audience to get out of this? And what is the, the best way to achieve that? I think that's always the question that anyone should be asking themselves. I think the most interesting way that they can is through this simulation, like the construct, the or the reconstruction of systems within um, a model, a game model that people can sort of go in and tweak. Like probably the the classic example of that is Sim City. It's a game about urban planning. It's a game about building systems, and it's a game about you know creating a city and creating an optimal city. Um, and the rules within that um, and the systems within that obviously reflect some aspect of the game designer's um, philosophy about what makes a good city run. Games are contributing to public awareness through through a number of ways. One is that they are just a cultural form now which engages you know large parts of the population and inevitably people are, are people who develop those sorts of games um, are, are starting to make them and also the tools have become much easier to make games so the the level of ability that you need to create a game that perhaps communicates your unique point of view um, is easier than it's ever been at any other point in history. I also think that there's been a real interest in cultural institutions bringing on games and trying to use games to, to tell stories and I think people are also very interested in what sort of things that we can say with games um, and what sort of uh, societal stories we can tell. Again, kind of coming at it from two different areas. One is how do we create a story that perhaps is a branching narrative where people can make choices that they then feel ownership of, which is incredibly powerful as a storytelling device. If you feel like the character that is in this narrative is in some way a reflection of you and your choices, then you are going to take some ownership over the problems that they face and also the results of the challenges that they face. And then on the other side, if you have a something that's completely systemic, something where you are just tweaking rules, like a global warming model where you can go in and see what happens if you tweak you know, the, the output of things, then that is a really powerful learning tool because you can see and sort of learn to internalize all of the, the variables that are being messed with, or, or things like economic models, um, or things like what decisions Somali pirates have to take. 
Um, these are all very powerful sort of storytelling and, and, and learning tools. Well, some documentaries are adaptable in the same way that other mediums are, are and aren't adaptable. So some documentaries would be so documentaries that are exploring um, systems and rules, like if a documentary about an economic system or the collapse or the evolution of an economic system would definitely be transferable to um, a game format. Um, other more narrative documentaries, like uh, for example, if you're following um, people on a journey or people in an experience or people who are making life or death choices, you can, if you can find a way to um, turn those choices into to clear rules um, or find the, the key decision points where you can create a kind of a branching narrative um, so do you talk to this person or do you not talk to this person? Do you do you get on this boat or not get on this boat? Do you climb in this car or not climb in this car? Um, if you can find those branching points in a narrative, in a documentary, um, then you can transfer that sort of story and that fiction into a game or a game-like experience.